Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITNs. Hope you all are fine and well. So the, this video is basically we are focusing on some important concepts uh, regarding some uh, interview related questions and also some exam related question. So let us start the video. The first question that are, uh, that is asked in various uh, institutes and uh, IITs at interviews. The question is suppose infinite potential uh, two rigid walls at uh, x is minus uh, x is less than minus a the potential is infinite x is greater than uh, a the potential is infinite and there is a delta function or delta potential in between this region okay so can you sketch the wave function for th this kind of potential so what will be the answer yes first let us discuss a simple a uh, potential box so box potential what is uh, the potential form that is there is infinite for two barriers and in between the potential is zero so v of x is infinite at zero or less than zero and v of x is infinite for at l uh, uh, x is l or x is greater than l and in between them at means v of x equals to zero for x zero to l okay so to sketch the wave function, we usually solve Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger equation is h psi equals to e psi. So h equals to uh, uh, p plus uh, k plus uh, b energy plus potential energy. So k is minus h cross square by twice m del to del x to psi x2. We are taking this one dimensional case plus potential is suppose v of x is the potential into psi of x t that is e psi that is i h cross tilde t of psi which is a function of x and t. You all know about this formula and if we solve this equation we can find out the wave function of the uh, oscillatory in nature. Okay, so sin kx n pi x by twice l. So depending on this length of this box that will depend. Now the n equals to 1 usually we don't take uh, we don't account for n equals to 0. Why? Because if we take n equals to 0 the sign term will be 0. So n is n equals to 0 term is not allowed and also n equals to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 they are not allowed because if you see this energy that is energy is, pro is equals to n square pi square h cross square by twice ml square. So if, if you just square it so 1 if you square it minus 1 it will be also 1 minus 2 it will be also it will give you plus 4 minus 3 it will give you plus 9. So if you just take positive or negative all represent the same energy. So basically you just need to account the n equals to 1, 2, 3, the discrete level of energies, right? So this discrete amount that is the wave function will be also according to the nature that is for the n equals to 1 state the wave function will look like this. There will be no node in the wave function for n equals to 2 there will be one node, node missed where the probability of psi having being psi is zero. The n equals to three, the wave function will take this. n equals to four, the wave function will take this shape. So it, you can just see this graphic also. So the particle is moving inside this box or this uh, one dimensional box potential and you can see this wave function accordingly it is changing. Now this is a question. Can you physically interpret the wavelength of this wave function for ground state? It is larger. If we go to the higher excited state, the wavelength is gets smaller. Why is it so? Because suppose the wave function is at ground state. So the energy is lower because this is directly proportional to n square. So if n equals to 1, the energy will be pi square h cross square by twice m l square. For n equals to 2, the energy will be 2 square pi square h cross square by 2 m l square. But for n equals to 3, there will be 3 square pi square h cross square by 2 m l square. So see here, as you go to the higher state, the energy of the particle is higher. Now, how do you represent it from the wave perspective? The wave which has greater energy that has lower wavelength. So look here for n equals to 1, the wave has highest wavelength for n equals to 2, 3, 4, 
it decreases gradually. So that is all the physical. How do you relate the wave function and particle nature? So you have to understand that basically the particle is represented by this wave function and this is associated with the de Broglie de wave and when the particle is going from a ground state to higher excited state definitely the wavelength associated with that particle will be less and frequency will be higher as the energy is gets higher so this physics you need to understand when you learn quantum mechanics and all this foundation in this uh, discreteness it is coming due to this boundary at the potential the potential is limit uh, uh, limited so the particle motion is also restricted and for your kind information only those waves are allowed which will form the standing wave solution because there should be no loss of energy at the stable states like n equals to 1, 2, 3, these are all are stable states, right? So they should form. I mean, they will go to this boundary, they will reflect, go and reflect, and they will form a standing wave, and they all will uh, give us a stationary uh, solutions. So this kind of physics you need to understand when you learn the quantum mechanics and always think that the particle is represented by a wave. So the particles which were earlier but just only denoted by the mass, by the position, now it is denoted by the wave function, by the wavelength, by the momentum and its related associated quantities. Okay. It is fine that we can easily calculate the wave function. We can easily find out the uh, the energy levels also if if the interview uh, interviewer tell me to find okay but the question that interview asked that is suppose there is a delta function in this box potential so what will happen so let i just give you 10 seconds to think so let us think that whenever we are finding out the wave functions we need to uh, we need to um, consider only the well-behaved wave functions. So for the well-behaving wave functions, we need to consider certain conditions like the wave function should be finite. The wave function, if the potential is infinite, that wave function should be vanished. And the first derivative must be continuous. The second derivative must be continuous. The wave function must be square integrable. So we need to consider all the things to sketch the wave function. Okay. So let us uh, go to the question and directly to the answer. So for the last case, we just take this whole first as a wave function, sketch the wave function this. But here now there is a discontinuity in the wave uh, potential. That is the potential becomes infinite at this particular position. So the wave function, the wave at the potential, there should be no means the probability of finding out that wave at a particle at that particular region is very less so what happens here here for psi one that is the for, uh, ground state there they, it would be without the presence of the delta function it will be like this way so let me just uh, draw this so here this can be like this way and also for the second order it is all right because at this middle position there is a node so wave function is zero so i should take another color i think let us take me this way so in the absence of this delta potential the wave function like ground state uh, first second ground state psi one is this one psi two is this one and psi three would be also this one but now what happens so let us just erase all this yes it is happening that the wave function at this particular delta potential it becomes very it is a discontinuity because the waves or the particle probability to stay here that is the lowest probability so that's why the wave function has taken this shape so i think you understand why this wave function has taken this shape because there is a infinite potential and this is a delta potential there will be a discontinuity at this particular position of this delta potential and how do you find out the discontinuity 
we usually take a small limit suppose i am the first order of the wave function i am considering so del psi d psi dx at uh, uh, for that particular small region of the delta function which is suppose i am taking the region as pa so pa plus epsilon and minus of d psi dx pa minus epsilon that should be uh, this i mean we usually find out this uh, finite amount uh, this continuity like this way for the delta function and we can find out the energy and also the stationary states respectively okay so this way you can answer the question what you have to think here that when i have no boundation of that particular particle to travel here this is no problem but there is a boundation in terms of this potential energy that is delta potential energy definitely the discontinuity will occur and that will give the wave function uh, uh, that will definitely uh, give some effect to the wave function and it will look like this way okay so let us go to the second question the second question is that a particle of mass uh, m uh, is uh, and the energy e is greater than zero in one dimension is scattered by this potential so this is the form of potential vx this is a function of x and at a and b this is a potential a is v1 at b there is a potential v2 and there is a non uh, i mean linear gradient from v1 to v2 okay so the question is if the particle was moving from x equals to minus infinite to x equals to plus infinite which of the following graphs give the best qualitative representation of the wave function for this particle the first one is like this the second option is this the third is this and the fourth is this one so how do you find it out so let us suppose first the particle it is already tell uh, particle was moving told that particle is moving from minus infinite to plus infinite so from the left it is coming to the right so what are the boundaries here this is the boundary first boundary this is the second boundary so at this boundary there will be some of the wave will be transmitted and some of the wave will be reflected and same with the second boundary also the, um, the wave that is transmitted from this first boundary some of the wave will get transmitted and some of it will get reflected okay so the highest amplitude will obviously it will be this here because the all the uh, wave it is not reflected or transmitted it is just going i mean the incident wave it has the maximum amplitude so first one look here this this is cancelled because the amplitude is very less here and it is now going greater so it cannot be possible so let us cancel this first one or highlighter or i just take the pen so cancel out this first option now see the second option b c and d second third fourth because all of this has the first region is well good okay the amplitude and now consider the second one that is v1 to v2 so this potential is a negative potential right because if we consider this as the zero level the v1 is attractive v2 is more attractive so whenever there is an attractive potential the energy of that particle should be increased or decreased obviously the attractive potential will give the more energy the it will contribute to the energy of that particle that is e minus of minus v that will become e plus v so the energy of the wave uh, particle is increased so the frequency of the particle will be what the frequency of the particle will be decreased so this first one this has the greater frequency and the second one it's a lower frequency right and uh, so here we do uh, this option is cancelled because this is not uh, i mean understood enough and also look here this one that is this one there is a no change in the amplitude the how much wave is going travel through this v1 that much uh, wave is traveling through v2 also but that is not true because some of the wave will be traveled i mean will be transmitted some of it will be reflected uh, then again this transmitted wave some of it will be transmitted and some of it will be reflected so the amplitude will be also decreasing so this option is the correct option so option c is the correct option 
so this kind of question this question has been asked in net uh, 2000 uh, i think 19 so you understand the question uh, so that you can uh, understand the physics and you can answer the question friends we usually give the interview guidance so we ha have already started our interview guidance program and this program is especially going uh, is uh, designed to give you the experience and also we ask questions like the ISERs or IITs they usually ask at the time of interview PhD interview so you can join the question they are a regular discussion weekly discussion also we give the bark examination and um, bark uh, interview guidance also so you can contact to this number for further information so we request you to this course is of six months so please join this course as soon as possible because what we give you guidance we just give you the understanding or developing the concepts of physics but the task our task is to make you understand that how do you think it how do you develop the concepts but you need to read the books you need to ask the questions to yourself also to us also when when you are free to ask any question that come to your mind and without any hesitation to ask. So our job in this interview guidance program is to guide you how to think physics, how to understand physics and how to implement it in real life. And also we give a programming guidance course and this is uh, within the minimum cost like only 699 rupees only and we give python and matlab language guidance and there will be also weekly classes you can ask any question you can uh, find out the help and also the assignments it will be given after each class and after each class we will provide you the recorded sessions also so that you can further uh, uh, watch that video and uh, clarify your doubts and also we provide the test series program and the full length test of five tests only rupees six two forty nine the subjective test five forty nine and both the test that is six ninety nine uh, and that is uh, full length and subjective test and the tests are programmed uh, and designed such a way that you just uh, these are the practice tests for the NIT examinations and get like examination. This will be really helpful. Friends, we are not providing more number of states like five tests and ten tests are enough for you to understand how to qualify the exam. That's all. If I provide you 50 tests and you just hardly give 10 or 20 tests uh, very uh, confidently other and you just ignore all the other tests, there is no meaning. The minimum test that is providing you the maximum benefit and that is for our purpose and that is why what is our purpose and that is this uh, test series is designed with this minimum cost so don't worry just go for this test register for this test and for the test series students the interview guidance cost is also reduced and there is a discount offer and the interview guidance test uh, students also get the programming test and programming guidance they are all already a reduced cost they will get it so all this programming test series interview guidance you can get an avail uh, you can contact to this number so friends please like this channel subscribe to our channel and share with your friends hope this video is helpful to you thank you